Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about easy bass clarinet multiphonics. So getting started with multiphonics can be a little bit overwhelming if you're a clarinet player. The books that are out there have these massive charts and maybe you feel like most of them don't work for you or you're not getting the same pitches that they have. So in this video we're going to be talking about the easiest 20 bass clarinet multiphonics to play and composers if you're watching this video stick around because these are the ones to write if you want to have a really high success rate with the multiphonics that you're using in your piece. So my name is Heather, I'm a clarinetist and new music player with 20 years of experience playing contemporary music and working with living composers. The BBC has also called me the queen of multiphonics so I'm just the person to help you explore these amazing sounds but I also tested these multiphonics on 21 other bass clarinet players to make sure that they were as easy for them as they are for me. So if you play the bass clarinet, grab your instrument and let's try these multiphonics out. But before you do that, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and let me know how you get on with these multiphonics in the comments. How many of them worked well for you and would you like to see more videos about multiphonics? If you'd like to see a chart of all of these multiphonics, I'm also going to post a link below to that. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to find the right embouchure or throat position to make a multiphonic sound, but with the ones I'm going to show you today, it should just be the case that you play the fingering and blow with your usual embouchure and you get the multiphonic. If for some reason that doesn't happen, here's a tip and you can apply this to any multiphonic you're trying to play. Try playing the two notes of that multiphonic individually, really get them into your ear and then play the fingering again. Multiphonic playing is a listening game. I'll try to give some more tips as we go on with these, so stick around. Okay, number one, the easiest multiphonic on my list is this one. So that's got a slightly low E on the bottom and a B on the top. You may find that instead what you get is the F sharp above that. And that's perfectly okay. Those are both great pitches for that multiphonic. If this multiphonic feels a little stubborn for you, it might be helpful to pretend like you're steaming up a window. It's sort of that kind of quality of air. A great way to train these multiphonics is also to practice moving between the low pitch and the high pitch if you can get them. And the way that I'm doing that is actually just changing my tongue position. So if you think of whistling a higher note or whistling a lower note, that's how I kind of find the different positions for the two pitches in this multiphonic. Okay, number two. This is one of my favorite multiphonics. It's got such a beautiful sound. Uh, I use it all the time when I'm improvising. I kind of always just sort of, I feel like it's like home for me, this one. Number three is really closely related to number two. We're just changing one finger. really nice and stable and you can make a nice trill with number two. Love it. Number four. This one's got a really nice kind of beating quality. It's really beautiful and really easy to play. Number five, again, this one's really related to the one that came before it, so we're only changing one finger. It's a little more difficult to trill between these two, um, just because, at least on my model of bass clarinet, uh, they're kind of connected, the, the keys down there. But you can definitely go back and forth and it does sound really nice. I do really 
really love these multiphonics that that cover a lot of the instruments. So a lot of my fingers are down here because it just really helps with the stability of the multiphonic and it does help with the ease of play. Um, number six. I really like the feel of this one. It's got such a kind of mysterious sort of haunting vibe to it. Number seven. With this one, you really see the second register key in action. So uh, at least on the buffet, this, this key here activates a second register key up here. And if you try playing that multiphonic without that key there, you see how it just kind of dies. change there so that could be something nice to use number eight now we're moving into what i categorized as reasonably easy multiphonics so this meant that the people who tried these out for me 60 percent of them managed to hit the multiphonic on the first try so here's number nine multiphonic here that where most of the instrument is closed and I've just got this one open here and I first find yeah makes them really stable. Number 10. This one's really similar to number nine so you could do a nice kind of color shifting trill thing here. Okay, number 11. Beautiful dissonant quality to that one. Number 12, it's got kind of a tricky fingering, although the multiphonic is quite easy, so it might just take you a second to find the position here. Okay, here's number 13. Yeah, this one feels really stable to me. I feel like I can gradually crescendo on it and it's just gonna kind of get more sort of buzzy as I go. It's probably actually really good practice to try to do that, to try to get that crescendo going and see how far you can control it. Because if I don't sort of maintain the pressure, it can easily get out of control. Although maybe the out of control is quite fun as well. Mm. Right, here's number 14. stable I can crescendo and decrescendo on it without too much trouble uh, here's number 15 so this one I can't really do that that crescendo on it's sort of got one dynamic that it really wants to speak at and that's true of a lot of multiphonics especially um, really close dyad multiphonics which I might do another video about some other time um, so sometimes playing multiphonics is a bit about finding the dynamic that that multiphonic really wants to sing at um, and this one is definitely more kind of mezzo piano to mezzo forte sort of sort of volume and it's really important if you're a composer that you think about this, about what dynamics the multiphonics are going to work at, especially if you're writing ensemble pieces where they need to be heard 
over the ensemble or with, within the ensemble, within the balance of the piece. Okay, here's number 16. So this is often the case with multiphonics where the bottom note will sound more strongly first and then the top note will come in after that and that's perfectly normal. Most multiphonics want to sound this way. It's extremely rare that you'll have a multiphonic where the top note will sound first. If you're having trouble getting them to sound at the same time, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's a really normal thing and there are a lot of multiphonics that really won't let you sound them together. Most of the ones that I'm presenting here today should do so then it's just something to kind of practice and work on to really find that space where it's going to sound stably and together a lot of that again is just about using your ear here's number 17. i really like that one here's number 18. So in this one, I've written the high D is the highest note, and that's definitely in there. But as you can hear, there's a lot of other stuff going on in this very raucous multiphonic. If I really aim for that D, it's a little bit more difficult for me to play, actually. So I just aim a little bit higher. And here's number 19. This is probably the hardest one of these easy multiphonics because um, it's quite a quite an overblown sound. But if you really play that G first, make sure it's really in your ear. We can still hear the G, but there's tons of other distorted stuff that's going on in between that really starts to feel stable once you've had a couple of goes at it. And the last one, number 20. Anyway, I hope you found this pose useful. I hope you've enjoyed playing through these multiphonics with me. I'd love to hear what you think about them. Uh, do check out the blog post where I've listed all of them. If you want to go back and look at some of the fingerings, you don't need to kind of pause through the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next week. Okay, bye!